Hi. Hi. My name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette, well, church. It's St. Bernadette's school structure, which is just below the church. Today is Tuesday, September 15th, and we celebrate Our Lady of Sorrows. We're talking about Mary, of course. But let us begin as we always begin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O oh God, who willed that when your son was lifted high on the cross, his mother should stand close by and share his suffering. Grant that your church, participating with the Virgin Mary in the Passion of Christ, may merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And let us come together as we break open the scripture. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, save me, O Lord, in your kindness. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me. Make haste to deliver me. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. You are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead and guide me. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. You will free me from the snare they set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. How great is your goodness, O Lord, which you have in store for those who fear you, and which toward those who take refuge in you, you show in the sight of the children of men. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, O Virgin Mary, Without dying, you won the martyr's crown beneath the cross of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I often wonder, sometimes people ask me a question as to, you know, why, why do we read these things in this order? And, you know, why do they, they do certain, certain people at certain times and certain readings? I mean, not just Christmas and Easter, but is there some rationale to the way, you know, these things are, are layered in our book and the way we read them in the lectionary and so on? Well, here's an example for you. Yesterday, we read, Monday, the, September 14th, we read the exaltation of the Holy Cross. So we talked about, you know, 
Christ dying on the cross and so on and so forth. Okay, so the next day we have Our Lady of Sorrows. So who is standing at the base of the cross, exaltation of the cross, but we get a list of who's there. You know, Mary, his mother, and, and Mary Clopas, wife of Clopas, Mary Magdalene, uh, the, the person who, the disciple who Jesus loved, which is John. Um, and so consequently, there is a rationale by how some of these uh, hol that what you would, we would call spiritual days or holy days, um, which is where the word hol holidays comes from, is holy days, uh, that there is a rationale to the way these are put together in the lectionary, and there's a rationale to why these uh, feast days may come together and back and forth and so on. But it's interesting, we, we, talk, a, you know, we talk a lot about different things, and so, uh, quite often I get, I get asked, um, why do you Catholics worship Mary? Now, as a Protestant, I thought that too. Um, but the point being is, is, is that we don't worship Mary, but we hold Mary up as an example of what Christian faith should be. I mean, literally Mary leaves it all at the base of the cross. I mean, she's warned. A few weeks ago, we had the reading, you know, when she meets the archangel and he tells her she's going to, you know, birth the Christ child. And she says, how is this so? You know, and, and we, we had a, you know, a beautiful reading there about how that whole thing worked out and the questions she asked and so on. Okay, so she knew what she was signing on for, but today in this reading, she really sees what she signed on for because she's at the base of the cross watching her son die. I imagine any mother, I don't imagine, I know for sure, any mother watching their child be executed, that has got to be like the worst possible thing. And to be up close and personal where you can hear his, his screams and you can hear the nails being driven in and can see the beatings and so on, how awful that must have been for her. And yet this lady hung in there. This lady was there and, and as an example of Christian faith for us, because even in our darkest hours, Christ is there. Um, but it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there. When he's resurrected, she becomes a prize to be hunted. They, she's sequestered away. John takes her uh, off and hides her in the mountains, you know, to keep her from being, because people were hunting her because they wanted to execute Mary because they weren't able to execute Jesus. Jesus resurrected. So now they're going to go kill his mother because that'll prove that he's not, you know, the son of God. And, and so she's hunted for the rest of her life. So when she signs on with the archangel and she knew what she was getting into, think of this. This, this, is, ama this is just awful. And yet, you know, today we see her sorrows, but we also know the joys at the other end. And, and as I've said before, people ask, you know, do you worship Mary? We don't worship Mary, but Mary has got to be the consummate Christian. Mary has got to be the ultimate Christian. If you want an example of Christian faith, it's Mary. Because she signs on and she never signs off. She takes the obligation and it costs her dearly. It costs her everything. It costs her her life. It costs her her peace of mind. Everything. She sacrifices everything. And that is why we hold Mary up in such reverence in our church. Because of how she lives out her faith. How she lives out her promises, how she lives out her commitment to her faith. You know, it's interesting in a world where you sometimes even have people, people don't have time to volunteer. <laughs> you, know, you ask somebody to volunteer, oh, I don't have time, you know, I, I go to church or I make my donation and that's, you know, Mary volunteered her life. My brothers and sisters, we're called to do that too. We're called to volunteer our lives. We're called to make a commitment to our faith, not just show up on Sunday, not to show up occasionally to help out, not just come to church events, but to commit our lives to Christ. Amen. We have opened our hearts and minds to the wisdom of God in the liturgy of the word. Now let us turn to him humbly and sincerely with these common petitions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Archbishop, Jose, and for all the pastors, priests, and deacons of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, that they be blessed with the zeal and courage to proclaim the values and the obligations of our holy religion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civil leaders and representatives on the national and local levels, that their laws and their lives be an inspiration to all people by reflecting right reason and divine revelation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, 
hear our prayer. For our youth in particular, that they be given the encouragement and the guidance they need to resist the immoral and sinful presence of our current pagan culture. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the needy, the aged, the lonely, that they be consoled spiritually by the gifts of grace and also receive care, aid, and loving concern from relatives, friends, and neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died recently, especially Mary Fletcher, that they may speedily attain the blessedness of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions. God of mercy and compassion, bless us by granting these common petitions, for we plead to you in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us come together and pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, ever and ever. Amen. Having received the sacrament of eternal redemption, we humbly ask our Lord that honoring how the Blessed Virgin Mother suffered with her son, we may complete in ourselves for the Christ Church's sake what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Have a great day. Have a great rest of the week. We'll see you tomorrow, Wednesday, hump day. Amen.